All right, so we move on to Ogre's turn three. Uh, this is where I'm getting really scared. He, So he charges his Iron Guts into my Questing Knights, and I think the only chance I have there is if I can just hold up for a turn and then somehow get my Prophetess back here to reheal my guys. But those those Iron Guts are just going to be able to do a ton of wounds. His uh, other bulls charge my my general, and I, I think I'm okay there. I'm just going to issue a challenge, and, and hopefully you know, I'm not really worried about dying to that battle standard bearer he has. If you look at the top left, my Pegasus Knights get, get charged by that Scrap Launcher, and I, I, I could have fled. I mean, these guys are built to flee being fast cav. I just wasn't worried about it. And at the top right, Scrap Launcher cause, charges those Knights, and again, I could have fled. But I didn't want to flee and then have his Noblars charge me and flee again and just be totally out of the battle. And again, I just wasn't that concerned about this chariot, you know, getting a charge on me. Because I'm going to have a, you know, a rank and a banner and all that. If you look at the right, his Gorger charged into the side of my Knight's Errant. And the way he did it was beautiful. He went forward and then he wheeled enough that when he hit him and did his free wheel back, he was he he's positioned such that my Grail Knights can't get him from where they're at. They can't, I can't fit him in there. So I thought he did a real good job of um, positioning that, and that's uh, <laughs> to, to my detriment. So close-up look at that carnage that's about to happen. Close-up of the charges. Yeah. So this was devastating. This guy came in. This is where my Knights of the Realm used to be. Uh, he, he caused two wounds, but he had a charge, a charge down a hill, which I had forgotten about. He had a flank and did two wounds against my banner and a rank. And so he won by three, and I failed, and he ran me down. Now, one thing, I, I didn't know that he rolled three dice. I, I assumed he was rolling two dice. And so that may have changed my mind, may not have. I don't know. But that was devastating because it was not only a big unit of knights. It had my prophetess in there. And now uh, it's a lot of points gone. I don't have any magic. I can't regrow anybody. Devastating devastating. So this guy hits my Pegasus Knights. He has a charge. He has a flank. I don't remember what wounds he did, but he had, he won by one or two and broke them in combat, and they fled, and he ran them down. I think I rolled like a three. So <laughs> devastating round. Uh, this Gorger comes in. Between the Gorger and the Giant, they only kill one Knight Errant, and so we all hold, and that was, I, I felt, very fortunate for me. The Iron Guts went to town on my questing knights. Um, yeah. So the way, because we, we always, both of us had the always strike last rule, my guys got to hit no matter what. But he didn't break my guys. He, he killed them to a man. And, and he would have had several more wounds. I mean, these guys, I did not appreciate how lethal a group of Iron Guts is. There's, <laughs> and especially with this general, that, that is a unit of nastiness. Um, and there on the left, I used to do a challenge with my general, and he declined it, hid in the back row, and so all those attacks going at my general just uh, wiped him up very quickly, killed him, and overran, and his gorger came on behind my trebuchet earlier in the turn. So uh, my general is built as a glass cannon. He, he can kill a monster, but he's not designed to sit, to sit there against all those attacks coming at him. So uh, learning a lot of lessons here, but one of the, these ogres are nothing to play around with. So we go to Brett turn three. At this time, I pretty much know the game is lost, but I, I'd certainly like to salvage what I can, and yeah, let's just see you know, how everything else plays out. So I can't charge my Grail Knights in, so I move into a position so that next turn I can. I bring my men-at-arms out of the house, um, hoping to get some kind of flank or rear charge on somebody. And really, there's not a whole lot for me to do. All my units are dead. Uh, Pegasus Knights charge into the flank of the giant. And there we go. And this could be before or after combat. I really don't know. My Pegasus Knights did nothing. I don't think that they completely fluffed all their attacks. I think that giant's sitting on four wounds. So the Pegasus Knights may have got a wound in there. Whatever it is, they didn't do enough, and we all hold in combat. Now, amazingly... You notice my knights here, and there's no, they didn't get any wounds. I am making a lot of armor saves there. So, og Ogre's turn four. Um, yeah, so he takes his... He had a butcher and a general in that unit of Iron Guts. I probably didn't... 
that's probably listed wrong at the beginning of this battle record. I, I apologize about that. So he took both characters out of the unit. That only left one iron gut there, and so he was able to move them all as individuals. So they just kind of scatter around my men-at-arms. And then lower left, everybody charges my trebuchet. Um, he brings his scrap launchers up, you know, just for future charges. Yeah, close up of that one. Close up of him there. Yeah, my guys are in so much trouble. <laughs> so after combat, the uh, on the lower left, the trebuchet is destroyed. The uh, peasant bowmen flee and run off the board. The um, after killing my trebuchet, his unit of bulls turns around to face my men at arms. So <laughs> that's not really appealing. We finally kill the giant. Um, but the men at arms or the knights errant are still in combat with that gorger. So they turn. So at least he doesn't have that flank anymore. The problem is. The gorger has high toughness and he's unbreakable. So my my knights errant are just unable to get any wounds on the on the thing. So close up, close up. See the noblars are threatening my trebuchet. Actually, the noblars charged my trebuchet, and only did a wound, and we held amazingly enough. I think we I did two wounds back. So that was just kind of amazing. So what I'm going to do on my next turn, which is going to be a next picture, but it will make make more sense here. The battle standard bearer charges those noblars. Because I, I want to get him off that trebuchet, because the trebuchet is about all I, the only hope I have of actually doing some, some wounds on his general or something like that. So Brett turn three. The battle standard bearers with the Noblars at the, at the far right. The, uh, the Grail Knights get a flank charge into the Gorger. And my opponent's really, he's, he's saying, you know, you're just going to wipe him out. And I'm thinking, you know, I only, I'm only getting two, two guys. That's four strength, six attacks. I hope I can do some wounds, but it's certainly you know, nothing guaranteed. If you look at the top left, my Pegasus Knights that w that were in the combat with the Giant, they charged uh, that scrap launcher in the flank, and I'm pretty sure I'll do some wounds on it and, uh, you know, be able to chase it, run it down. And my Men-at-Arms charged the front of this unit. And I know that's not going to be pretty, but I just kind of, there's nothing else for my guys to do, and I just kind of want to see how they hold up with against them. So close up there. All these pre-combat pictures. And yeah, so my Pegasus Knights go into the flank of the, flank of the Scrap Launcher. I don't do anything to it. I might have put a wound on it or something, but he easily holds, uh, which is really bad. The uh, the Bulls make short work of my men-at-arms. I mean, those they opened up a can of nastiness and just, that was ugly. So my guys were on Snake Eyes and didn't make it. My Grail Knights go in and do zero wounds. They absolutely fluff all their hits. And he turns around and kills a Grail Knight just to add insult to injury. So we all hold in combat. And, um, yeah. Yeah, that this one was disappointing. I was really hoping to break that thing. And uh, Battle Standard Bearer did his job. He went in there. I was really kind of worried because he had a lot of static combat res. And my guy's sitting on one wound. And if I break from combat, I die. But, you know, that's the fluff of the army. So he charges in, they, he breaks enough, and breaks him in combat. I tried to chase him down and didn't do it. I'm not going to continue to pursue him because his angle is such that he's not going to go off the board anytime soon, and I'm gonna, I want my battle standard bearer near the action to give me some rerolls. So, Ogre's turn five. Uh, his, his general charges into the flank of my Pegasus Knights. Um... You know, otherwise you can just kind of see what he's doing. He puts uh, one one butcher in the building. He brings his bulls up to get a future flank charge against my Grail Knights. And this one on my turn, I didn't think he could see me because I thought his front was to the right, but he's kind of facing that corner. So uh, not a big deal. I don't know if that, that probably would not have stopped me from making that charge because I fully expected to win and be out of the way. But um, that did teach me a lesson to make sure I know which is the front arc of, of these models. So we're still battling out here. You see a scrap launcher comes into the flank, and I'm thinking, oh no, not these scrap launchers again. And when all is said and done, the scrap launcher actually breaks from combat. I don't think it had any wounds on it, but I, well, I did wound somewhere, obviously. But um, anyway, he broke from combat, so he's not bugging me anymore. The general and the scrap launcher, both of them open up a can of nastiness on my Pegasus Knights, break and run them down. Yeah. 
And these that stupid Gorger, <laughs> the thing's unbreakable. He's sitting on two wounds after all these rounds of combat. I can't get past his high toughness. That thing is just brutal. And amazingly, I'm not losing that many knights. I thought he would have been, I thought he would have killed me more quickly, and I thought I'd be able to do more wounds on him. So I drop a rock on these guys' heads, but there's I kill a butcher in the process. No, not a butcher, but his battle standard bearer. But they are still ready to flank charge my great Grail Knights. And we go to top of the sixth. He charges in, as you can see. And when all's said and done, he uh, kills all my Grail Knights. We're still locked in combat otherwise. Uh, my last turn, I decide to take my Battle Standard Bear in a charge against his Butcher that was standing there. And even though I was only on one wound, I was able to kill him first. I think we were both sitting on one wound. Uh, the Gorger finally died. I felt that was a moral victory. And that was the end of the game. Obviously a, a, a major massacre for the Ogres, and hats off to him. I thought my opponent played a very good game. Uh, I think I played a really, really poor decision-making game. But nevertheless, it was a lot of fun and definitely a, lear a lesson learned in Ogres. Hope you enjoyed it.